Okay, um, good morning everybody. I hope everyone can uh, can see and hear me um, and you can see the, the Harrogate Brand Design Masterclass uh, on the screen. So, so that's what we're, we're here today. Um, very, very wet and frankly miserable day here in, in Harrogate, but uh, I guess one positive of doing this virtually um, is we don't have to talk about the weather much um, and we can uh, just enjoy uh, the Zoom. So thank you all very much for taking the time to, to join this, uh, this creative masterclass, and, and I really hope that you are looking forward to it as I am. Um, pleased to know uh, it, it was a sellout, uh, so um, we, we've got lots and lots of people interested. Um, it looks from the latest participant view that we're still waiting for a, for a few more to, to join, um, but hopefully uh, they can catch up as we, uh, as we get in. So um, for those who don't know me, um, I'm Mark Roberts. I'm the founder of Beerhawk, um, an online beer retailer, um, and I'm also the uh, chair of the Harrogate Place um, Leadership Group. Um, I think many of you uh, would have joined us back uh, in March, which feels um, an entire world away now, but back at the launch of the Harrogate story, um, where we talked about the importance of having a very consistent and also compelling narrative and um, to talk about the amazing districts that we are all very proud to be part of. And I guess whilst the last few months have been fundamentally different to what any of us could have imagined at the time, um, we, we sort of start to see that the, the combined benefit of telling the story about our place remains as relevant right now as it, as it did back then um, when we were all together. Um, so today, I guess we wanted to provide some ideas, some inspiration, and also some tools to help all of us with our storytelling um, so we can create more compelling stories about um, our, our organisations, our businesses, and, and our place in, in general. So, so to help us do that, I'm delighted to welcome um, some wonderful guests uh, who I'd like to sort of quickly introduce. Um, we've got John Till, uh, who's the founding director of Thinking Place. Um, he joined us back at the launch event in March, and he's going to give us a quick recap on the story we told there, the four themes, um, and also the big idea. Uh, we also have Peter Anderson uh, joining, uh, who will be introduced properly in a, in a few minutes, but he is an award-winning creative director. And just looking at the list of things that he has helped create the visuals for um, is incredible. So, um, you know, from Dracula uh, to, to EastEnders, Good Omens, The Hustle, Casualty, um, and, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what, what he has to say and, and sort of learning from him um, throughout this masterclass. Um, and I guess as they run through these short presentations, please do think about how you can bring the themes that we're talking about to life in the context of your business and your organisation. Um, and just before I hand to John, um, the flow for the day, um, I think it was billed as two hours. I, I think everybody can appreciate that two hours sitting in front of a computer screen on, on Zoom is, is quite a lot. So we're going to limit this to 90 minutes. So we will be done by, uh, by 12. Um, John will go first uh, for, for about 10 minutes talking about the, the story, the themes, and, and then we'll pass to Peter for the bulk of the session. Um, but I also just wanted to, to point out that the Q&A functionality, which I think I'm just sort of pointing at it at the bottom of the screen. Um, for those who are familiar with Zoom, and, and forgive me, but, but I spend most of my days on, on Zoom right now, there's a Q&A function. And as we go, if we could um, ask questions you know, relating to this, um, uh, then we can come to that um, at the end. So um, I'll now pass to John um, and, and welcome to, uh, to this Creative Masterclass. Thanks, Mark. It's a fantastic project to work on. Um, it's a real shame that I can't actually see um, you guys there. And, and my job really is to try and to tell the story in five minutes, which is almost impossible. But anyway, we'll do the best we can. Um, so, as Mark said, please, please ask questions as we go along um, using the functionality. And I just urge you as well to take a look at the Think Harrogate website. There's a lot of information on there um, and it will tell you um, about the brand, about the story. Um, and as I say, it's a, it's a good place to go in terms of give you a good grounding in, in what we're talking about. So I think um, there's some important principles within this story um, and that is that whilst Harrogate is undoubtedly a brand attractor, 
this story is relevant for the whole area, for all the towns in it. It's a unifier. And it's also a story that is very much about growth and the economy. And the story has four themes. We're going to show you some of the evidence for each. We're not saying that they're 100% in place, um, but we are saying that they are what Harrogate should be focusing on. And that story has come from a huge amount of engagement with many, many stakeholders across Harrogate. And the important bit is the story drives everything. So what you're gonna see with the story is not anything that's customer facing or marketing, it's very much um, strategic. So as we wander into this, I'll let you look at the words that are there um, to describe each of the themes. I'm just gonna focus on a couple of bits and pieces here. I think the first bit is to say there's a wonderful combination of urban and rural uh, in this place and that the whole of the place is actually in itself an experience which is really very, very special. And what Harrogate does is it brings out the best of people. Um, they feel stimulated, they feel great about being there, and that's for business as well as for visitors and also residents. So it's a place that welcomes entrepreneurs. And I think when we look at the world that we're in, in now, this is gonna be as important as we need space. It'll be important for staycations. So this whole idea about people bringing out the best of themselves and just loving doing their thing in Harrogate is as important now and in the future as it was when we originally did the story. And into the second theme, and you know, the whole idea of the Harrogate experience is kind of almost a sector, a business sector in itself. And one of the things that you see on the screen there is something that we're all talking about now, and that's work, live. And how is that balance going to reflect going forward? And what an opportunity um, there is for Harrogate with this, as we change the way we look at what we do in terms of work and what we want to focus on. And this leads into the fact that this is a key place for independence and the independence are really what has driven Harrogate in very many ways and the notion of being able to create that collaborative creativity in the different places across the patch is really really important and something that you have that is special and that leads into this theme about being a beacon of independent commercial spirit this is always been in your DNA and with changing working patterns what an opportunity for the place you know leads down the road fantastic quality of life you can have city and you can have countryside as well third thing um, again you know if we think about the place clean air open spaces greenness and that's within the places as well as surrounding the places so fantastic quality of life and this idea of livability as a driver for business again big big opportunity there and of course the green economy and, and when it think when we think about health you know you have healthcare innovators in your place and what an opportunity to use those businesses as part of the proposition and as part of this idea that we have in a theme here about being a lifestyle oasis and we know how many people are searching now for health and well-being you know if we look at right move as soon as right move came back online the thousands of people who were looking for a quieter lifestyle and more space and thinking about their own and their family's health. Well, Harrogate's in a great place for that. And the last of the themes, um, well, it celebrates something that, again, we all enjoy. You only have to look at just the three of Harrogate Water, Slingsby Gin, Tailors of Harrogate, and lots of other great independent producers um, and retailers. Um, 
the food and drink festivals that already exist and certainly that we could make even more of and the links to land and landscape which is so important when we think about the authenticity and localness of food and produce and drink which everybody has come to respect i think even more in recent weeks and again a big opportunity um, for independence and sitting above those four themes we have a big idea which is a bit more of a statement of intent and with this we think about harrogate the brand and the opportunity to build on the fantastic brand recognition that Harrogate has, how we can add sparkle to that even more than is there already. And, you know, Harrogate has real place power. You know, many places just do not have the brand equity that this does. And when you think about the location and the relationships with Leeds, with York, with Yorkshire, fantastic, fantastic opportunity to build on that for all of the business that linked to it. And it kind of puts you ahead of the game. Very few places have got this strength. But what it needs is it needs all of the place to come together, to collaborate, to make the absolute most of this in what are, of course, very challenging times. So we have a Harrogate story um, there with a big idea and four themes. As I said, they are there to drive activity and they are there to drive how we tell the story and at this point it's great to hand on to peter and that you'll see in this how the story drives absolutely everything and peter has been at the heart of creating that story so we're going to explore now how we tell it please please keep asking your questions on the q a functionality at the bottom and we'll come to that session later on peter Thank you. Um, I'm just trying to get a handle on the controls. Um, which, uh, oh, there we go. These are, I'm not late, I'm not stuck in traffic, but I have to navigate Zoom. Um, hi, my name's Peter Anderson. I'm Creative Director of Thinking Place and Director of Peter Anderson Studios. Um, my main role is to bring brand stories to life whether they be in place, film, or television. Uh, these are just some of the places, and there's a, a multitude of places, whether they be cities, countries, counties, towns, or developments, and also a multitude of film and television projects, which really, in a more direct way, is about understanding a story, understanding its audience, and dynamically bringing it to life. So examples include Northern Ireland with its multitude of um, communications with Zambia and its very radical artistic destination management plan and implementation um, plan that goes with that. Cities like Lancaster and again its multitude of expressions and behaviours towns like Malden, um, and in some cases, quick wins with changes with their environments and environmental needs. Um, and event brands, this is one for the National Trust called Time Machine. So in terms of film and television, uh, projects uh, I've worked with include Mandela, uh, The Hustle, um, and in the same breath, Human Flow, and, and the reason I've paired these examples are they're very much very different audiences. One is mainstream Hollywood, the other is art house. They both require a very different treatment and a different expression. Um, other examples again follow that suit of the story effectively affects what the expression is. Um, so if you're dealing with something that's period drama, you have a look and a feel which is illustrating and bringing to life that story. Whereas if you're looking at something modern, you're thinking in a very modern way um, in the multitude of expressions, including how people think and how that's expressed 
in television, as you can see here. Um, so the important thing here is Harrogate and Harrogate's story, how we bring that to life, how we make that relevant. Um, and one of the things that I do from the strategy themes and big idea, I develop a, a set of words which I would call bridging words. They are creative strategic direction words. So they're illustrating words is another way to put that. Um, and things that have to be kept in mind when anything's expressed, you know. So some of the words here you can see and you can read from yourselves, you know, you know, we'll keep talking about independence and the aspiration that goes with that because Harrogate has it in absolute buckets. Uh, but it's also creative. It also has things that aren't above the surface. You know, it has a digital story. It has quirkiness, you know, alongside its boutiques and its elements that we're very aware of. So in terms of telling Harrogate's story, the first thing that we all think about is photography. It's the most obvious thing. It's the most immediate thing. You know, when most people think of photography, they think, okay, we're going to photograph the main assets in, you know, the town or city center. Um, that's not really what a place is. You have to think what its story is and what is the best way to communicate that story. So if you think of somewhere like Holy Island in Wales, um, in terms of its strategic story, its Celtic roots were very important. It had a spiritual quality and a ruggedness about it. Um, you know, very much focused on things like its stories of druids and, and other things. So when it came to its photography, there's a simple mechanism here where the camera photographed into the sun and that highlighted one of the elements of its strategic story, it made the imagery feel more spiritual and, and connected. Um, also something that was very important to its story was not just looking at history, it was about animating history. So you can see here these sort of young children playing within the photograph, therefore modernizing and animating history. Uh, one of the other things that was important was in its story was the land was bigger than the people. So in really simple terms with the photography, the land is bigger than the people. Another example with Coventry and its, its expression, again, it was about innovation, technology, enterprise and learning. So again, that meant we looked at that innovation. You know, we went in to the testing areas of Jaguar and Land Rover and we showed behind the scenes of what the city was really doing. Uh, and here's another example of that at one of its universities where there was a lot of research and development. Aldershot, very simply, was about changing perceptions from what was formerly army, army, army to something which was putting the family first. And what that simply meant in terms of art direction was you put the family first. This is an old army facility that has now been repurposed for the community. So you're showing that off. You're showing those elements and you're showing that that family has come first in the models that occupy the photograph. Uh, with Harrogate, you know, there's, there's, there's so much good stuff. I've, I've, I've got to say, of all the places in, in Britain that we've worked with, it's the one where virtually immediately I thought I could live there. I really could live there. I'm so jealous. Um, with your story, you've got mobilizing this brand, this wonderful thing, and this wonderful place with all its um, assets. Um, so... We've got to take into account all these elements when we're doing the photography. We've got, to, we've got to show off that it's a lifestyle oasis. We have to show the artisans and brands. And we've got to illustrate that it's a beacon of independent commercial spirit. So that means you're not just showing your big brands like Harrogate Water and Taylor's. Um, you're also showing some of your other um, creative businesses and artisan activities um, like Slingsby, uh, which is a wonderful um, um, day out if you, if you haven't done it in terms of learning how to make your own gin. So it's not just a product, it's actually an experience. Um, and some of these other brands um, that are very important, but also showing this oasis, showing that this, that independent spirit exists, that this is a place where young entrepreneurs can come on the scene and be inventive. Um, and some of the, the lifestyle elements that come with that, which again are absolutely outstanding. 
So these are just some of the photographs of the place. There's, there's a whole pack of these, which will be distributed to um, the ambassadors. So one of the other elements is a visual language. Um, a visual language is particularly apt for a place. And the reason why that is, is a place is not a business. Um, it's a way of effectively underlining a visual story in a very flexible way. So it can work like a watermark or it can work in a more front facing way. Um, so the context of a visual language um, in terms of what it needs is it needs to be confident, it needs to add value. In this case, it needs to communicate brand Harrogate and that's a very multi-layered thing. Um, as I say, there's many aspects that illustrate the idea of quality of life and also quality of work. You're also balancing things like modernity and heritage. Um, but doing this in a confident way is incredibly important. Uh, so in terms of using a visual language, a great example of this is Chesterfield. Chesterfield, in a way, couldn't be almost like Paris and the Eiffel Tower. Um, Chesterfield, with its um, twisted tower, you can't get away from. It's, it's one of its icons that effectively everybody thinks of straight away. You type it in, you'll get it. Various expressions that relate to this church um, with, with most of the businesses. It's almost comical how many people use the twisted spire to express themselves. So in terms of its big idea, which was very much saying it had a lot of great assets, but it needed a modern awakening. It needed to take those assets and bring them to life a little bit more. But also underlying that, there was, there was inventiveness and a quirkiness um, that you would only actually prize out if you looked underneath the surface. So in a very simple way, modernizing this modern icon of the twisted spire, you can't really go much further than this. You've got your Chesterfield, it's, rel it's welcoming the heritage element, it's looking at this prime icon that everybody recognizes from a very obvious place perspective. Um, but if you look a little bit deeper, and if you develop from an identity into a language, you can start to tell some of the stories a little bit more. So if you take that twisted spire and you break it apart and you look at the quirkiness and the inventiveness of what makes it special and what makes people proud of it and makes people relate to it, it then becomes a visual tool for metamorphosis. It becomes a way of saying the past can influence the future. So taking this simple metaphorical mechanism and growing it, changing it, morphing it, um, makes it something that people can understand and relate to, but it can also visually be an indicator to say, we need to take these ingredients and move forward and look to the future and effectively nurture our inventiveness. So the other advantage of a visual language is you can apply it and use it in a multitude of places. Again, in a way, a logo, you just can't. So very simply here, you've got an opportunity on one hand, on the left hand hand, you've got the place itself expressing itself and with its design, looking at those slats that make up the spire and taking that further into a design system. But then on the other hand, you've got a multitude of other businesses being able to use the visual language. So this is a developer on the right, it's its visual language. It's its own brand colors, it's its own logos. So the place isn't interfering with the company's own expression. What it's doing, it's adding something. So if you look on the right hand side, um, you'll see that the visual expression in, in terms of the visual language is just a quiet watermark to indicate that these developers are proud to associate with the place of Chesterfield. It's not interfering with their brand. It's not another logo that's competing with their brand. It's an element of solidarity that's saying, we are very proud to connect with place. So when it comes to Harrogate, in terms of its visual language, what we're trying to do is get that feeling of place. It's not about 
accurately describing all the icons and all the artisans and all the brands. It's about getting a feeling, getting a feeling of quality, getting a feeling about how the place, its architecture, its detailing, its experience all overlaps and all comes together, whether that be thinking, whether that be the river, whether that be the countryside, whether that be some of its specific buildings. In a way, it's actually about all of those things. It's about all these ingredients, whether it be the high quality education, whether it be Betty's, you know, whether it be some of the churches, um, whether it be that fitness and well-being. It's about weaving together all these elements that make a place special and getting across that confident modern feeling that effectively brings some of those elements from its heritage, brings them forward and makes them relative to a young audience. So again, there's a multitude of ways of using your expression, whether that be the design elements, the visual language elements, whether that be the photography, but fundamentally, the use of this visual language is to be able to implement under a unified banner, whether that be an independent business who wants to, 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 to effectively champion Harrogate and actually mobilize Harrogate as a brand, because we all know it's synonymous with just quality. Um, so this expression that goes with that is hinting at some of those elements, but it's also allowing itself to be a multi-purpose use. Again, other examples here, whether it used in business, whether it used, again, very in a very frontal way with a website, um, but also in terms of going back to sub-brands, you know, so whether some of your institutions will use it. And they have their, like I said before, they have their own expression. This is not about changing any business or institution and, um, or um, expression. This is about effectively adding to, this is about giving more tools that help say that. So again, you can see here, in terms of it being used as a sub-brand in a more quiet way as part of the imagery. Um, and again, another example, being used with another company. Um, and here it's just, you know, by adding it to something like a photograph, it's like a quiet but modern stamp, which connects specifically to place. So there's also other tools. You have um, effectively a logo type. Um, and what's very important here, it's not just Harrogate, it's the multitude of towns that are part of Harrogate district that are important. And each of those will have their own expression and identity. Um, so they can be used effectively, confidently in their own right, but also being brought together as the sum part of the whole. Typeface. So now in terms of applying the thinking, um, I thought it was helpful to think about your story um, and where are the opportunities to sell that story? So when we have a play story, we have to go back to what we call the egg. I guess the starting point is when you think about expressing a story, you have to think, how will it change the environment? How will it change our products? How will it change our communications? And most importantly, how will it change our behavior? So simply the story effectively has come from a point where a lot of research has been done, a funnel of evidence and information has come right down to a point that says, these are the things that make your place special. When that concentrated part happens, you have to think, how can that funnel out the other way into this area of implementation? So again, we can keep going back to Harrogate, its story, and its brand, themes, um, and big idea. As John had said, these aren't marketing slogans. These are effectively the engine. Um, so your engine, your body work can change. Um, and depending on whether you use, in some cases, all the themes in the big idea, but probably more practically, you'll probably use just one theme. So you might just use one theme for an entire year. Um, and that's absolutely fine. Another year, you might focus on another theme. 
because things change as we very much know with the situation we're in now. Therefore, our behavior has to change to effectively adapt and to effectively come out as best we can um, from change. So every part of your expression should be this element that makes us special, how can we mobilize it now? And how can we bring it to life in whatever situation we're in? So who can tell your story? Um, every time I tell this, it makes me emotional because it's this simple sometimes. This is an example uh, with Hull. This is before Hull won City of Culture, um, quite early on in that journey, uh, where the people weren't connected with it, weren't connected with its story and didn't have pride. This was just a simple exercise that told Hull's brand story to the community and to young kids. Uh, and at the beginning of this exercise, they, uh, they were asked how many people and how many young people more specifically intend to stay in Hull when they grow up and leave school. Almost nobody put their hands up. After this simple exercise of showing what was special about the place, showing some of its assets, showing where its future could lie, the same question was asked and most of the children in the workshop put their hands up. It was a very simple but powerful exercise. Um, this is another very simple exercise. This was Castleford. This is with a television series um, on Channel 4. And very simply, the town was asked what they wanted in terms of its change. Uh, overnight, we did an installation where very playfully and creatively we put up some of those elements of change. And the Channel 4 documentary filmed people's response to their own words and, and used this effectively as a platform for giving people that sense of power and taking away that feeling of alienation, that the place is not connected or people within a place don't have a voice. Um, Coventry, um, its themes and big idea, again, innovation was very important with its technology and enterprise, peace and reconciliation. The fact that it's city centre is okay, but not great, but actually, as somewhere where you could hold events, it is great because of its infrastructure and because of its different facilities. Um, so in their case, in terms of, again, mobilizing their brands as well, this is their ambassadors group. And as you can see, there's a lot of people here and there's a lot of very influential people here. But more important, this was hosted by Jaguar Land Rover because you know, technology, innovation, and they are the heart of that, one of the, one of the brands at the heart of that. So by coming up together, they're showing off and working together those assets. But don't wait for the place to discover where you are. Coventry and Waukesha took their story very realistically, knowing where the developers are, knowing where there's a lot of money, to London. So this was an event that they held at the Shard, and they, they brought their story to effectively people who can invest in their place in the future. Another example going to peace and reconciliation, this didn't exist before the brand story and this was about being ambitious. So then this became a global event, a global event putting Coventry in the center of peace and reconciliation. So effectively with its behavior, taking one of those themes and bringing it to life. Um, but then on a more local level, in one of the ambassadors groups, one of the ambassadors said, look, we've got a ring road around the edge of Coventry. It's an absolute nightmare. Uh, one of the other um, ambassadors said, I've got connections with cars. Why don't we create a specific car event to celebrate not only uh, Coventry's history and heritage with its inventiveness of cars and its current position with where it's going with self-drive cars and electric cars. But what, let's use the infrastructure in a collaborative way. Let's council and private enterprise come together to create something which is beneficial for place. Um, and of course, they took that ambitiously forward to winning 2021 UK City of Culture. So all these elements come together, the people from the place make the place and move the place forward. But if they can do that 
with a united story, you get an incredibly exciting outcome. So another example I've got here, we were um, very privileged to win the best place brand in the world for this. This was the South Down National Park. And I'm showing this really because it's showing you a multitude of implementation, whether it be infrastructure, whether it be uniforms, it's a multitude of examples, which I hope will bring a little bit of inspiration about very how simply, not just behaviorally, like we talked about with Coventry, but also how you can effectively take some of your assets you've got, champion them and use them to bring things to life. So we had a main visual language uh, and that can be, you know, was implemented in a multitude of its centers um, around the South Downs National Park, which is actually the biggest national park in Britain uh, and the newest. Uh, so whether it be in some of its communications, whether it be in this infrastructure, whether it be uh, in its signage. So part of the importance here with uh, the South Downs was it needed effectively to create a place that didn't exist. So signage was very, very important to them. Uh, and that could be used in a very um, sculptural way, or it could be used in a much more light, light touch way in terms of the visual language just being carved here. Um, so again, local entrepreneurs integrated into products like the beer, uh, the local council used it in everything from wayfinding to exhibitions to some of its cars. And in terms of also giving that message across about 100% electric being very important to uniforms, to things like advertising. And with advertising, the importance here was the message of the advert was as important as the imagery. Um, to communications like its website. In this case, again, it was about changing the behavior of its website. So it brought those themes to life. Um, again, other products right down to library cards, some of its sub-brand opportunities. Again, the National Trust don't sub-brand with anybody. In fact, they are the brand police. But if you have a visual language, even someone as tough as them get excited. So this is one of their centers. And as you can see, they absolutely embraced the brand of the South Downs National Press. And they brought it to life. They paid for it being brought to life within one of their centers. Um, and the brand just keeps growing and changing. So once you have a structure, you know, they were uh, awarded dark sky status. So therefore they had a festival. So therefore they moved their visual language forward and changed it to be relevant to that story. In terms of ambition, you don't have to be a big place. North Knots, tiny little place, but it had big ambition and it had ambitious people within the place. Its visual language is very much celebrating that space and countryside story. Um, and they were effectively, as a team, very ambitious about putting that forward and changing their behavior. So this is about bringing the countryside into their city story, bringing some of their stories into their town centers as well. So these were allotment benches that the local people could bring to life in the town center. But not just that, in terms of its stories, they've got some amazing stories. Even though it's a little place, they've got Robin Hood. So not looking backwards, looking forwards, you effectively got sculptural signage, which is telling the Robin Hood story. You know, these are arrows that are shot through modern trees. So what's important here is not just the, the, the that is, is also giving the individual times expression. So you can see here that Retford has its own color um, and Worksop also has its own color. So the sub towns within that expression can do their own thing as well. They can be part of the whole, and even boring things like, like car parks can be brought to life in a more interesting way. Again, bringing stories to life can be a simple thing. This was managed by their historic society and it, and it effectively, and it was paid for by Virgin Rail, who wanted to make their railway stations look a bit more place relevant. Uh, right down to offices, offices bringing it to life in a more localized way. But again, you've got more ambitious things here. So this was a whole museum, which was about bringing their pilgrim story to life. This idea was hatched by them looking at one of their themes and doing something about it. And even to things they're in plans at the minute of working with us to make 
the largest sculpture in, in um, Britain. This sculpture will compete with the Angel of the North. They're saying it's going to, going to dwarf it. And they're using this as a place, beacon, an icon, which is celebrating countryside. Uh, but not just that, and on a behavioural level, they've got together and they're effectively the first rural place to win a bid. And effectively, that means money. That means millions of pounds. So very, very practical. So in terms of what you're going to get, you're going to get a toolkit. And that toolkit is going to be a set of things that shows you how to use and understand your themes and big idea. It's also going to... Um, technical pitch. Um, it's also going to show you how to use your visual language. Um, it's going to show things like color palette, photography guidance, um, amongst a whole set of other things. Your identities, how to use them. You'll also be given a brand a storybook, and that storybook really is about helping you bring that story to life. It's a behind the scenes thing that celebrates your individual assets, your businesses, and that effectively just is a way of, of, of um, helping bring that story to life. Um, as I say, as a behind the scenes tool, not a front facing tool. That's an example of that. And it's a, you know, your multitude of things that are on offer. So, that brings me back to our themes and our big idea and why we're here today. Because we're here today effectively for you and for your thoughts and to mobilize you as a place and you as individual businesses to say, how can we use our brand story? How can we use what makes us unique? And how can we unite those assets in a way that gives us all more opportunities as a place? and that will bring more investment and therefore more opportunity and jobs? How can we effectively make our young people excited and want to stay and, and become the next stage of artisans and brands moving forward? So we have to think about the play story. We've got to think about environments, products, behavior and communications. So this is over to you now with your thoughts and your questions to effectively how you move forward as a set of ambassadors that represent your place in an exciting way. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Um, yeah, really interesting and inspirational stuff there um lots to think about i think the key bit which hopefully everyone's understood is the importance of this is it's not just about visuals and a visual language it's much more than that it's about changing behaviors it's about how you influence and leverage activity that might already be taking place that could be events conferences festivals public realm there's a whole host of things you can do to bring that place coherence. So we've got um, a few questions already. Um, so as I say, keep whacking those questions in on the Q&A function, and we may not be able to ask, answer all of them. If you've got any technical ones that we've not dealt with, please use the Think Harrogate website. Um, there's a way of um, contacting them um, online on that one. So I think if we go to some of the questions, um, so the first one um, is about how it's important that the story needs to be relevant to all the places. Um, so whether that's Nidderdale, Masham and etc. And the person asked this was commenting that they could see that it's rele very relevant for Harrogate, but is it relevant for all of the places? So maybe, Mark, if I ask you to start on that one. Sure. Um, th thanks, John, and, and also uh, Susan for the question. I mean, I, I think the, the short answer is yes, 
absolutely um it, it needs to be incorporating the entire district you know yes nidderdale and mashram's here but nairsborough ripon borough Brit, you know e everywhere around and i think the themes um are not just town center themes they are they are sort of places for for our entire district now i think what we're all going to need to do is make sure we all help bring the examples and the stories in the case of those across the districts to life and i think that's a very practical thing that everybody can can work with but you know just to re-emphasize the very intention of this is for the wider district um, and that broader backdrop that that you identify and, and, and not just for a town center place that that says the word harrogate yeah, I think just to add to it, I think one of the things that was really important was the engagement involved all of the places right across um, the area. And if you look at some of the assets that we've touched on as part of the story, fountains, Brimham, Rudding, Black Sheep, you know, I mean, we're telling the story of the whole place and it may well be that when we get into certain campaigns or rather when you get into certain campaigns, you won't be talking about Harrogate at all. You might, some of those things might be talking about completely different bits of the patch. I think the important bit is it gives you um, flexibility and, and that's what it's all about. Peter, one for you. Simple question, why choose blue? <laughs> <laughs> I think there is a, um, I think it's about feeling quality. I think simple answer. I mean, you, you could relate it to the river, you could relate it to other aspects, but the simple thing is about expressing quality. Okay. And um, yeah, I think that I think that's absolutely right. And I think it, it, it's got to have that luxuriant feel, doesn't it? Which is very important. Um, another one, Peter, I'll, I'll chuck at you. Um, How's this approach fit with campaigns? Is there a danger of it being a bit too rigid? I think one of the exciting things about having a brand story as opposed to having a marketing strategy is that you can have multiple marketing strategies. So when it comes to expressing it, um, you in some cases may not use the visual language at all. You, it may not be appropriate. You know, you might be talking about your farmer's produce and you might be taking a, a new set of photographs that will show effectively showing about how things come from source um, all the way through to the restaurant. So in that case, um, you'll be doing your own expression. So the most important thing here is that the themes and the big idea and the fact that they are brought to life in a multitude of different ways. There's a time when your visual language and your identity will play a very strong role in that. And there's times when that will be very, very quiet, if not invisible. And that's just about it being appropriate. I think the most thing that, the thing that makes me the most excited is the fact that your stories and expression can change. Okay, um, a couple of quickies which I, I can deal with. Um, first one, can any business use the graphics? Absolutely. These belong to the place. So whatever you are as a business and organization, whatever size, shape, they're there for you. That's the whole idea. This is not about the council doing this, although they'll be important. It's about everybody doing it. So yes, you can. Link to that. Can you have the toolkit? Absolutely. If you contact the council, again, if you go through the website, um, they will supply you with that toolkit. So absolutely. Um, one for you, Mark. Um, person raising the point about how important it is to keep young people. And when we looked at some of the, you know, one of the themes there related to entrepreneurship, startups, etc. How can we keep young people, and how can we encourage them to start up businesses? across the Harrogate area? Yes, I think it's a great question and um, I, I've definitely gone through the uh, the barrier of young but um, I, I have started a business in this area um, and, and I know uh, a lot of the business community um, who, who have also done that and I think you know I, I'm not the only one to say I, I genuinely think Harrogate is amongst you know if, if not the best place to you know start a business in the UK. Um, I, I started my business at the same time as um, you know, starting a family. 
um, which was was more than a little challenging. But the the life balance that that you know Harrogate as a place sort of gave me um, ha has been incredible and, and really sort of supported me through that journey. I know a lot of other people do. I, I think you know when you when you do speak to people who have businesses and are involved in businesses, that there's a lot of entrepreneurs and small businesses where the, the, those stories just are untold and, and many people don't know. So the perception is, you know, Harrogate is a place where old people go for tea and coffee at Betty's. Um, and, and I think what we're saying is, you know, there, there are broader stories that we need to do. That. And if we tell those stories and we give the opportunities, then, then I think that should hopefully provide some some inspiration and, and evidence that, that this is a place that, that can do that. And I think in your question as well, you know, can, can we look at affordable startup spaces and, and things? Absolutely. I, I, I think that's one of the things, but, but we collectively, everyone on this call and, and the people who aren't able to join today, that we, we need to own that conversation in partnership with the council. But I don't think we should expect, you know, them, whoever they are to do it. I think this is something that we need to take ownership for. Peter, um, how, how can you manage the brand design for a group of towns who are very different? I think the simplest answer to that is photography. Photography is the prime expression that we all think of in terms of we recognise and it communicates in the most direct way. If you're using that alongside the visual language, the visual language then becomes the glue that effectively visually unites those elements and brings them together. Um, you know, I think, again, in terms of place layering, there's always a time and a place. There's a time and a place for each time to express itself, but when it's trying to leverage effectively more influence, it needs to unite. And when it unites, it can have more leverage. So in every case, it's about taking the tools that, that you're given as a place, and as a, as a wider place, and using them in the right time, in the right place, in the right event. And at each of the places, you, you may not have seen it because obviously there was a lot to take in. Every single place has got its own identity dealt with. So, you know, as part of the toolkit, they are there and, and available. So I think that's, that's important. Um, there's a question about, have you considered how influencers can help tell the story and maybe you want to pick up on that mark um i mean i guess the short answer uh, honestly is no but i think it's a good question um so so i think you know when we're uh when we started you know our our, our sort of story launch we we asked everyone who was there and, and people who weren't there to sort of help us tell these different stories but in a consistent and compelling way together um, influencers who are within this district are very welcome to sort of help us do that. Have, have we actively approached uh, influencers to, um, to, to ask them to tell the story? No, um, and, and that's something you know, we, we could consider, but I guess it would be the same sort of toolkit, same set of words, say it, same everything, and, and it's a, an open invite for everybody to do so. And as you saw in, in Peter's presentation, um, he showed a couple of examples of ambassador groups, um, you know, Coventry, North Knots. I mean, the real power of getting the message out is, is through influences, is through ambassadors. So you, it's certainly a good thing to aim for. This is not all about um, classic marketing. It's about people's contacts, people's networks and et cetera. And that can often be um, even more powerful. Um, one of the bits here, Peter, um, how would you recommend colleges use the designs, the stories in their campaigns to show the younger generation that there are many possibilities available in the district? I think, you know, colleges and um, other businesses, you know, have, you know, they're going to have a set of photography which effectively celebrates the wider place you know, whether it be Slingsby Gin, whether it be Brimham Rock, um, whether it be the multitude of assets, whether they be countryside or within the, the various towns, having that as a vocabulary and a fast step access 
so that potential students can see what the place has to offer in minutes is an incredibly valuable thing. And I think also from, from a college perspective, they, they've got tools that they can use and be playful with. You know, in other places we've worked with, colleges and universities have taken the visual language and they've used them to fill big blank spots on their walls and, and effectively um, connect the people and the students um, with the place because sometimes um, campuses can be very separate from uh, places and feel like they're, uh, they're their own, um, uh, I guess, their own little island. So I think that both in the, in, in the um, college itself, um, in terms of changing its environment and how it behaves in its website are a good way to use the different assets. And, and, and linked to that, one of the questions was about young people's involvement and, and they were definitely there. Part of the engagement was with young people specifically and that's because they have a very different view of what matters to them in the place and what they want to see happen in the place. So, so their voices um, were, were definitely heard um, within the engagement. Um, there's a, an element about diversity um, within this as well and, and you know in the light of current events Harrogate's not very culturally diverse so how can that be addressed in what this approach takes forward have you got a view on that Mark? So it's an incredibly important um, and, and relevant question and, and and I think you know just just two thoughts um, the first is um, that there is the reality and there's also the perception. Now, you know, in, in Harrogate's place, you know, perception, reality, are they the same? Are they different? You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to comment on that, but let, let's remember there, there is potentially a difference between those. And I, and I think that the second point is, is just we should, we should start openly having that conversation um, and, uh, and, and consider it candidly openly and, and and very transparently and and i think you know we can all play our play our part in in doing that you know um and and i i think we should start and, and i think we should start thinking about what the right forums and right that what the right sort of people are to be involved in that conversation and um, but but we need to have it and um there's one about photography um is is the idea that and the council will commission photography that includes elements relevant to places like Masham, et cetera, that could be used. I think, I think the key bit is the photography that's been done so far, you've seen a very little flavor. Um, it is reasonably across the district, but it's a start point. The aim is always to build on that. The other important bit with that photography is that is yours to use, just like the toolkit. So it's free to use, so all you need to do is make contact with the council through Think Harrogate again, and you can have use of that photography because the more businesses and organisations use it in what they're doing, the more it gets um, the message out. So, so, um, so, sorry, just to come in on that, um, I, I've just been looking at the Q&A as well, and, and I have put now in the answered section of the Q&A a link to the Think Harrogate website, which is thinkharrogate, all one word, .co.uk. And then the specific link to get the toolkit is request hyphen toolkit. So thinkharrogate.co.uk forward slash request hyphen toolkit. Um, I have seen a comment on here saying um, that they have requested, um, but uh, haven't heard back. So um, what we'll do as a, as a sort of separate action is just make sure that we sort of, we go through those logs and we, um, we A, we make sure it's working and, and B, we sort of follow up on that. And I think, you know, with permission, we could we could actively send the links and the toolkits out to the people who have been on this call just to make it a bit easier. So, so let us pick up on that. Yeah, that's great. And um, there's one about um, measuring the success of place branding and how will we know if we're resonating with audiences. And I think um, I'll I'll start on that because we get asked that an awful lot with the work that we do. And I think the, the key bit with this again is, it isn't just about campaigns and traditional marketing. A lot of the effectiveness, if you look at Coventry getting 2021 20, City of Culture, 
and, and all three cities of culture have gone down this approach we're very proud of. They, they've not won it because of the visual language or photography, they've won it because they've brought people together and they've created collaborations behind the place and people have kind of left their own agendas at the door and come together purely to support the place. So if you look at any immediate measurement, I think it's how well um, Harrogate is going to collaborate, how well organisations and the different places are going to come together to all help promote the place because you can't leave it to the council and you can't leave it to the place leadership group. Everyone has to have skin in the game on this one. I don't know if you want to add anything, Mark. I think only that, um, you know, I, I uh, also have a background in, in marketing and I think it's important to look at, you know, the, the outcome metrics, which is what we're wanting, and then the lead metrics to try and help us get there. You know, the outcome metrics are, are going to be long term and specifically, I think this can help us you know, generate more investment uh, into the area, encourage more businesses and more new businesses to start up in the area encourage more uh, tourists when the time is appropriate to come to the area and spend money in the area and to sort of help you know generate that sort of sense of shared prosperity uh, for, for the area and I think that's what we're, we're trying to do and um, obviously that that takes a long time to sort of see so I think lead metrics become important and that's where you know simply asking people um, is it resonating are we um, as, as a district you know getting uh, increased numbers um, of visitors, increased numbers of business inquiries um, to you know the council and other groups to sort of start up businesses. And I think they're the things that we can start to measure and hopefully get an early read on whether this is um, resonating. Um, a bit linked to this, back to you again, Mark, sorry. <laughs> is this a one-off conference call or a regular thing? Uh, we're keen to be actively involved um, we are Harrogate Stays, which is new brand of bed and breakfast, keen to sell brand Harrogate to visitors to the area. So firstly, great. Uh, delighted to have you as part of this. Um, so secondly, um, this as a creative masterclass, um, it's not actually even a one-off. We're going to do this one today and then we're going to do a follow-up uh, creative masterclass in September. But the purpose of um, actually sharing the toolkit and Peter's thoughts on you know, visuals and, and the identity, you know, that, that's just going to happen on those, those two occasions. But ongoing, um, we've got this um, you know, concept for a place uh, ambassadors group, a place sort of network. And, and we're actually uh, having uh, a meeting of that on um, Friday, the 26th of June um, at 10 o'clock. So um, another thing that we'll make sure that we do as part of the follow-up is to the people who, who have been on this call, we can send an invite for that meeting where we can talk more specifically about the other things that we're doing. Because, you know, the, the story, the toolkit, the visual identity is, is very important. But we also want to kick off a number of initiatives to sort of help more holistically um, on this as well. But just overall, brilliant to have your um, your input and would love to have you, you know, using the assets and, and helping us all um, tell the story. Um, so another one, part of Nesbra, um, uh, its USP is green spaces, which attract healthy outdoor lifestyle, which is important for mental health uh, and well-being. How can we promote this and how future-proof can the brand be. Do you want to start a little bit with that, Peter? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think places uh, um, evolve. Um, so in terms of the future proofing, um, it's about adding um, elements as the story develops. So I think that's worth taking into account. And then also, when you want to promote or look at specific themes or specific parts of the story, you know, health and well-being in terms of, you know, connecting that with your lifestyle oasis uh, theme. Um, I think it's about really you, you uniting your assets there and thinking about how the different towns or the individual towns do that in terms of, I guess, making it relevant and specific to their story. And I, and I, and I think that Health and well-being is something that's very important, particularly at the moment. 
And I think the the the, the actual the notion of place demonstrating that, um, you know, as Mark talked about earlier, as somewhere where you live, work, and have leisure, uh, I think is is in Harrogate's case, you know, it's a massive big seller. And in terms of where we're going in the near future, you know, we had a trend where people were kind of migrating to big cities. So, but that trend is, is, is I think, going to dramatically change with the circumstance that we're in now. And I think if you think about Harrogate's relationship to Leeds uh, and its lifestyle oasis and its ability to say, actually, from a health and well-being point of view, we have got something to offer you where you can partly work from home, partly visit a bigger city, but effectively engage with a healthier lifestyle is going to be a massive story to, to tell. And it's going to be effectively another reason why young people will want to stay in the wider um, Harrogate. And I think in, in terms of future proofing, um, that's why the story is so important. Because if we look at places we worked with 14, 15 years ago, that's, the story hasn't changed. The essence of the place hasn't changed. Um, if you look at some of the great brands, you know, Coca-Cola, BBC, their core values are still the same. They might have tweaked the visuality of that, but their narrative of what they believe in hasn't changed. So I think having the story at the heart of this, it does future-proof it. Peter, do you want to talk about how the visual bit is future-proofed? Well, the visual bit is future-proof because one, photography keeps going and keeps evolving. And depending on the individual expression, promotion or need, um, depending on what that audience is, you'll continue to grow that portfolio. In terms of the visual language, the visual language, by being a visual language and not a rigid logo, again, can grow and evolve and elements can add on to that, different assets can add on to that, different emphasis can add on to that. Um, so the exciting thing there is, is that it's not a, this is it policy. It's a very much an organic process that's saying, this is what's effectively the story that helps you focus on what's important. This is a visual language and set of tools which help illustrate that story. So now let's decide where and when we use these tools um, and how they evolve. Um, so one of the things that I need to do is, um, in my excitement, uh, I mashed potatoes for mashem instead of massum. So I do apologize for that. That was pure out of excitement about talking about Harrogate, but there we go. I'll get the pronunciation right now. Um, Mark, someone says, how can you become an ambassador? And there, there is an open invite. I'm going to sort of plug this place uh, network meeting sort of once again, but, but two weeks today, um, we will send the link out um, and pl please do uh, come along. Yeah, um, one here about, uh, is there any learning from other places about using the brand to retain the workforce and attract new staff to the district? Um, the answer is yes. Um, I mean, it's interesting how certain places have used the story and the imagery of the place for all sorts of things from GP recruitment, um, to attraction of students and used it very effectively um, and I think that's that's important it has got a very key role to play I think in terms of attraction of talent and, and you've got such an amazing story to tell I can imagine you know telling that story in Leeds in York and it being very powerful before you even get further um, afield than that so I think Within campaigns that you can do, yes, it will be very, very powerful. And I think in terms of how you develop the knowledge economy, um, maybe people don't see the Harrogate District as a place for knowledge economy. Maybe they don't see it as a place for business. So I think, you know, the opportunity is there and hopefully you've seen it now with all of the different elements to really change perceptions because I think people just don't see the place in that way. The good bit is they see it 
in an incredibly positive way, which is a, a fantastic place um, to start. Um, I actually think we have got to the end of all the questions that I have. Oh, no, another one. Do you have any specific brand Harrogate copywriters? No, is the answer at the moment. Um, and how that's going to get taken forward to some extent will be down to, um, I guess, the place leadership group and the council, but there aren't any at the moment. Um, so I think that was fantastic. A really great array of questions. And, and with where are we, quarter to 12, so we're almost going to finish early. So anyway, um, Peter and I have had a great time. Um, as Peter said, it's been a fantastic project to work on. I think you have such a massive opportunity, more so than virtually any place I think that we've seen, and we're not just saying that. I think the asset base that you have, you know, it's almost unfair what you have across the district, and the chance to leverage all that is great. So I think at that point, we'll draw it to a close. I'll ask Mark to just conclude, say a few words. Well, thank you, John, and thank you, Peter. And I guess thanks to, to everyone else who have been asking the questions and, and using the, the Q&A functionality, which I thought worked, worked really well. Um, listening to Peter, I thought in particular about how other places have used this um, from the initial identity to the very specific things, both, you know, huge things you know the uh the, the, the statue that to, to sort of shadow the angel of the north oh wow um to to offices and signposts and and very very practical things i i think particularly got me looking at you know, the way lancaster and, and south downs have done i thought those examples were, were really great um I, I loved also how you talked about linking the imagery to the essence of a place and and just thinking through you know it, it really called out to me when you talked about sort of how the Lancaster spire um, was sort of changed and, and sort of linked to that. That, that really was, was useful. And um, so, so thank you very much for that. Um, the, the Harrogate toolkit uh, is there. Um, I have also put a link in the chat functionality, but we'll make sure that we send that out broadly uh, so that it is, uh, it is there for, for everyone. Um, and, you know, I guess I would say that that is for everybody to use, but it's up to all of us to come up with our own ideas and new content and it's also up to all of us to, to go and make these ideas happen um, and and so for us all to, to sort of engage with that and i guess that that is the the perfect link to just say once again that we do have this this meeting on the 26th of june which would be like the the, the next step in really engaging with this and really starting to think about how we can bring this more to life within our area so the the, the link will uh, will, will come out for that but it'd be great to sort of continue the, the dialogue and the uh, participation there so so thank you to everyone for, for joining and, and sticking with it um, thank you to John and Peter for, for finishing early um, and, and that's it uh, so uh, one more thank you and then we'll wrap up the call thanks everyone